Good morning, everybody. So I get a call the other day from a leader of an HR department for a 20,000-person organization with four, um, four sites across the United States. And she says, I'd like to talk to you about training our managers for the rollout of our new formal flexible work arrangement policy. I said, terrific, but can I ask you a few questions just so I make sure that I'm giving you exactly what you need? She said, shoot. I said, all right, first question. Why are you training your managers to roll out your new formal flexible work arrangement policy? And she said, well, they have to manage it. I said, okay. What exactly are they managing? And she thought, she said, well, they have to manage the requests from employees, and they have to coordinate the team. OK, great. You're absolutely right, I said. You do have to train your managers. But you have to train your managers, first and foremost, in the basics of good management for flexible work to succeed. Because if they don't have the basics of good management, it doesn't matter how much you train them about flexibility. They need to know how to give ongoing and consistent feedback. They need to know how to set clear goals and objectives. They need to be good managers. But guess what? New research from the American Society of Training and Development says that only 58% of new managers said they received no training in manager basics. So yes, train your managers, but make sure they know the basics of good management. Then, then, absolutely, add a thin layer of the tactics of flexible workplace success, like a, the icing on a layer cake. Teach them how to use technology. Teach them how to coordinate and coalesce a remote virtual work team. Teach them how to deal with the inevitable curveballs that will come up, like an employee who isn't communicating well or a change in the business that requires you to adjust the flexibility that that person has. Absolutely, train your managers. But what about the people on the other side of the table? Are you going to train them? Are you going to train them to be a good partner with your manager, to come to the table with a plan for the type of flexibility that considers their needs, but also equally and most importantly considers the needs of the business? Are you going to train them how to partner with their teammates, partner with their customers and clients to make sure that the job is going to get done. Because our research shows, we just did a, a national study of a probability sample of full-time US workers. Flexibility really isn't anything new to most employees, believe it or not. 97% told us they had some type of work-life flexibility already. And that could be anything from I could leave five minutes early to go to my son's soccer game to I do absolutely every single bit of my work from a remote location. So that's a big continuum. But this is not a new concept for them. But what is new and what they don't have is training and guidance. Only 40% of those same full-time workers told us they got any support or training to use that flexibility well. That means 57%, they're flying by the seat of their pants. They don't know how to be a good partner. And what we found is that when a manager knows that the person on the other side of the table knows how to meet them halfway, knows how to think through what the business needs and what they need, and then how to make that happen in a way that's successful for everybody, they're much more likely to be less resistant to flexibility. And they are much more likely to give it a shot and be innovative. She said, mm hmm, I hadn't thought about it that way. Well, then I said to her, OK, let me ask you another question. What exactly do you want people to do with this new formal, flexible work arrangement policy you're putting in place? And she said, well, you know, like every organization, we're doing more with less. But we have to still achieve the same, if not greater, results. So what we would really like to do is not sacrifice employee well-being and health to get those results. We would really like people to use this formal, flexible work arrangement policy to engage in the healthy behaviors we think are really important. In fact, this is so critical to our business, our CEO is spearheading a multi-million dollar, multi-site, 
culture of wellness initiative. We think this is very important. And I said, oh, interesting. That's very, very interesting, because what you might want to consider is training your people on how to use informal day-to-day -day flexibility. The small shifts in how, when, and where work is done, and how to capture that day-to-day -day flexibility to make the meaningful small actions related to their job, their career, and their personal life, including those healthy habits, happen. Because people can't exercise. People can't eat healthy meals. They can't get enough sleep. They can't do the things that keep them healthy if they don't know how to fit it in to everything else they have to get done. So they have to get a report done at work. So how do they get to the gym? They have to pick up their kids for carpool, take care of their aging mother. Oh, how do I eat a healthy meal? They have to be able to shift small ways in how, when, and where they do their job to fit in all of the important to-dos and priorities at work and in their personal life. And that requires them to be trained in how to use informal flexibility. And absolutely, you're going to train them to use formal flexibility when those day-to-day -day shifts aren't enough to help them sustain their performance and they need a more official change in how, when, and where they work. But even then, they still need to know how to get everything done and fit it together and put those micro boundaries up around everything they need to accomplish on and off the job. And she said, okay, that's interesting, all right. So you're saying informal and formal flexibility and connected back to our culture of wellness initiative. I said, yep. Because when you do that, you are giving them what I call the complete work-life fit skill set. The day-to-day -day tweaks, of informal flexibility and in how, when, and where work is done. Absolutely, you have to make it make sense for your job, but what's possible? How do you sustain your performance and be your best personally and professionally? But then also the resets, the times when you experience a greater life transition, like you have a baby or a sick parent or you go back to school or your partner relocates or you want to sort of keep working before you retire. Those big formal resets, they need to know absolutely how to come to the table with a plan that's thought through and can engage in a dialogue with their manager. So she said, hmm, okay, I get it, but you keep talking about work-life fit. And our goal is to help our people find work-life balance. I said, I'm so glad you brought that up. Important distinction. Because here's the thing, no company can ever give an employee work-life balance. You can never do it. All you can do is give them the skills and tools to meet you halfway, capture the flexibility that makes sense for their jobs and their lives, and use it to manage their unique work-life fit day to day and at major life transitions. Because here's the thing, their unique realities on and off the job, they're always changing day to day, week to week, month to month. You can help them understand how to work with you to make it happen. You can help them find their unique work-life fit, but you cannot ever give them balance. Now, I'm going to stop there before I tell you how this conversation ended, and I want to point out a couple things. First, she's not alone. I'm going to tell you this is how a large percentage of my conversations with HR leaders begins. She is coming to this conversation from a few default beliefs that many of us hold. She definitely believes that the secret to flexible work success is training managers. She believes that what the organization needs to offer and what people need to be their best, to maintain well-being and high performance is a formal, flexible work arrangement. And she believes, and she believes that flexibility is an isolated policy or program that sits outside of the business, not integral to any of the key strategic initiatives within the business. But here's what she was beginning to understand, and here's what I hope all of you will consider today after listening to this story. There's a new reality and a new way to approach work life, flexibility, wellness, and high performance. But it requires shifting the way you think about a few things. 
First, it requires understanding that the secret to flexible work success, the secret to work-life well-being and high performance is a partnership between your people and your managers. And this requires you giving your people a whole new modern skill set that most of them do not have. A skill set that helps them think about their unique realities on and off the job and what they require day to day and at major life transitions to continue to perform and make what matters to them happen personally, in their career, at work, including those healthy habits we're all spending so much money on to help them achieve. The second new reality is that it's about day-to-day -day and formal flexibility, but it's not an arrangement. It is not a policy. It is a process. It is a strategy. It's the way of operating that your people have to bring to the table, not only at work, but in their other parts of their lives, which, by the way, are one and the same. One and the same today. You can't keep them separate. And if we keep pretending they're separate, we're never going to get there. And finally, you need to leverage and link work-life fit and flexibility to all the other strategic initiatives that you are spending millions of dollars on that cannot succeed until flexibility is part of it. Like wellness, like those healthy behaviors that people have to have the day-to-day -day flexibility and how, when, and where they work to fit it all into everything else they have to get done. Like open office space environments, I got to tell you, they're great, but there are a lot of people who can't focus and cannot be productive. So how can you encourage them to use the flexibility and how, when, and where they work to continue to maintain focus and leverage the benefits of an open office space environment? Like business continuity, why, you don't have to close. When it snows, stay open. But that's a new reality. So let's get back to my friend, the HR leader from the 20,000 person organization. I had given her a lot to think about. And I said to her, OK, so uh, do you have any questions for me? <laughs> and she said, wow, wow. Okay. Um, where do I begin? And I said, I'm going to tell you a story about a customer who's not even as far as you are. They were just beginning to explore issues of work life and flexibility and how it could perhaps help their people in an environment that's undergoing a tremendous amount of change. They weren't quite ready to go with formal flexibility, but what they decided to do is they begin at the beginning. They create a baseline of partnership and give them the very basic skills and tools of the tweak it practice, the everyday work life fit practice that I developed. So they rolled that out to the whole organization, but then they did a six week pilot, a deeper dive with 40 people from different departments. And at the end of the six weeks, this is what they found. 100% of the, of the participants in the six week pilot said they, their productivity either increased or stayed the same. The people who said it increased were 42%. So there was no negative impact. 92% of the participants in the Tweak It pilot said they felt better, better, better able to prioritize all that they needed to get done at work, in their personal life, and in their career. 88% were more actively able to manage and intentionally manage the fit between their work and life. 81% felt they were better able to communicate and collaborate and coordinate with the people in their team and in their personal life to get everything done in a way that made sense for everybody. And 73% were better able to gauge their capacity. So the point from this story I said to her is, you start wherever your organization needs to begin and what it wants to accomplish. But this is just even starting at the very basics. The smallest change can make the biggest impact. Just start somewhere. So she thought for a second. And finally she said, OK, I want to talk to you about how my people and their managers can partner how they can capture the flexibility that makes sense for them and their jobs day to day and at major life transitions and use it to achieve our work life well being and high performance goals. And I said, absolutely, we can talk about that. And so can you. Thank you. <laughs>